You did. <laughs> Uh, thank you, Professor David Gross, uh, for getting us back uh, to uh, schedule, although still a little bit late. <laughs> although I, I, listening to the standard model, I w wish I had time to listen to the whole thing, but perhaps uh, another time. Uh, now I think we shall invite uh, Professor Yang to give his talk. Let's welcome him. repeat. My title this afternoon is The Future of Physics Revisited. The flavor of my talk you will find very, very different from that of the previous speaker. That these two talks are arranged one after the other, I'm pretty sure was not intentionally done by our organizers, Hua and Brink. There was in April 1961 a centennial celebration at uh, MIT. It was a really big celebration full of excitement and expectation. Uh, you must uh, uh, try to recall the atmosphere uh, of uh, uh, people of those days concerning the state of science uh, to understand what was going on at that time. At the celebration, there was a panel discussion called uh, the future of uh, physics. The panel was uh, chaired by Francis Lowe. And uh, four speakers in sequence were Cockcroft, Piles, me, and Feynman. The talks by Cockcroft and Piles can, uh, summaries of their talks can be found in Schwerber's book, Einstein and Oppenheimer. But uh, to my knowledge, there's been no published uh, version of these two talks. My talk was later published by me in my selected papers published in 1983. Feynman's talk was uh, not published at the time, but uh, within the last few years, it was uh, published by his daughter in a book called The Letters of Feynman. I started with a very cautionary kind of remark. I said, since there seems, seems to be too ready a tendency to have boundless faith in a future fundamental theory, I shall sound some pessimistic notes. And in this centennial celebration, in an atmosphere charged with excitement, with pride for past achievements and with an expansive outlook for the future. It is perhaps not entirely inappropriate to interject these somewhat discordant notes. I then said that to reach the present level of understanding of field theory, according to Wigner's way of counting, one must penetrate four levels of physical concepts formed out of uh, experiments. 
I then added that to reach further levels of penetration would become, I believe, more and more difficult. I added here, physicists are handicapped by the fact that the physics, physical theories have their justification in reality. Unlike the mathematicians or the artists, physicists cannot create new concepts and construct new theories by free imagination. <coughs> I was followed by Feynman, who started his talk with the emphatic statement that I don't agree with Professor Young's idea that the thing is getting too difficult for us. Feynman then said that he believed a final solution will soon be found. He said, what I mean by a final solution is that a set of fundamental laws will be found such that each new experiment only results in checking laws already known. And he added, and a final solution will be obtained. I disagree with Professor Young that it is self-evident that this is impossible. So that was a panel discussion in 1961. And uh, of course, we can see that Feynman was very, very confident. I think it remains a very important and good topic of research for historians of science to investigate why was it that Feynman was so optimistic in 1961. What have we learned in the next 50 year, some years since 1961? In 1961, there was no standard model. A gauge theory was only a pretty idea. But with the developments of symmetry breaking, of the electroweak theory, of renormalizability of non-abelian gauge theory, of asymptotic freedom and QCD, with the thousands and thousands of large experiments involving thousands and thousands of uh, physicists, we have arrived at the standard model. We can say, that to, we can say today that more than 50 years of Herculean effort have produced one deeper level of penetration compared with 1961. But what about the future? Would we reach a final solution? Or even the next level of just the next level of penetration in the next few years? If we compare what we know and what we don't know today with the situation in 1961 and reflect on what will be needed for the next level of penetration, I, for one, am afraid to reach that, to reach that ne next level will take considerably more than 50 years. Thank you. <laughs>